Uh, today we're going to continue working on the ductwork that we started some time ago. In a previous video, we showed you we had a door in this area right here that had ductwork going upstairs on either side. And that ductwork we had to go ahead and remove so that we could widen this door as, as you see in the picture here. So basically we had a section of ductwork here and one here and then this one. And so we moved all of those over to this area right here and built out this wall to contain the ductwork. Here's the finished wall that my son put in and it hides the round ducts that go from the basement up to the bedrooms on either side plus another smaller run. Our original plan was to use something like this. You use rectangular ductwork. We have air coming from the basement. We needed to go up the wall and then finally out to the bedrooms. And when we start adding up the prices of all these things, we figured out what I could do without all of them and just save the collar itself. And we could save a lot of expense, use flexible ductwork rather than this. In the big box stores, they have all kinds of different ductwork options there. But all we really wanted to do was concern ourselves with the register box that this elbow would go into. And of course, they didn't have a register box to fit the old grates for this 100-year-old house. So we had to make our own. And that's what we did. And uh, we've got the new ductwork established, insulated, flexible ductwork running through the house. And we've got these old grates and they're really, they're really beautiful. We didn't want to throw them out. We wanted to keep that, that look uh, in the house. And so we needed a box that would fit this open. And that's about two and a half inches from the bottom here to here. And so what I did is just basically built some boxes out of the sheet metal sheets you can buy and you can cut it up, just form a box. And what I've done is made a box that's two and a half inches deep. So this fits right inside it. Um, here I've got tabs into it because on one of the boxes, we're gonna have it sitting inside the joist cavity coming up from downstairs. And then this box will sit like right on there and we'll attach it to this elbow. Then our uh, great will fit right inside there because of the the space requirements that we have and because we wanted it coming up this way we had to make a real skinny box a lot of the stuff you can't find just in your big box store so you got to make it and that's at least that's what we found so that's what we're doing so that's that's pretty simple we'll go ahead and fit, attach that in a little bit the other one that we're working on now is we got a 10 by 4 by 4 uh, supply and basically I've just split this on the corners so that I could flatten it out. And what I'm gonna do is I have an, an extra box because I thought I, had to, I needed more of these than I did. So what I'm gonna do is just adapt this by flipping this box over and attaching this piece of ductwork to the bottom of it. And that, that'll work fine for our purposes. That's, a, that's what we need. Because we, we have one more supply, a small one in the bathroom that's gonna fit this the size great. So to do that, I've got some metal piercing screws and we're just going to go from the inside of this box downward and attach it. All right, so I'm just using these shears to create a little bit larger opening here on the side. Kind of adapt it to the supply opening better. And this stuff cuts pretty easily. So... One thing you have to be careful of is these edges, they get razor sharp. But if you take your time, you can get what you want here. That's what we're looking for. So now we use our screws. giving it a bit of a starter hole. Okay, that's pretty snug as is. Go ahead and put two more, one right here and one right here. 
All right. And now we're just going to add the seam tape around the edges. There we go. All right, we've got our box and it's good to go for the supply and it'll also fit that great just perfectly. Now we'll move on to the second one. And this is the one that has, this is going in the, what's gonna be the master bath. And from the bottom of here to the top of here, I have 11 inches. We've gotta cut the top part of this off. My box will add another, another couple inches on there, which I, I can't afford. So I gotta customize this a bit bring it down to something like that so we can get both the box and the elbow in that joist cavity. I think I can cut this and pop this out of its, because they turn inside those bends. If I cut this, I think I can pop it out. Yes. That'll give us a clean size. And now we can go ahead and, because I left tabs on the other one, we should be in really good shape. Ah, perfect. That's great. Okay, so now, because I have these tabs here, I just bend those down, screw them in. Right. So there we go, put the screw right in there, and we'll go around. All right, so we got a tab on either side there with a screw in it so that the box is really tightly affixed. Make it airtight and we'll be good to go. Again, the whole goal is to have something that functions and uh, not have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for or specialty pieces. I'm trying to make it fit within the bones of an old house. The tape we're using is Nashua 367-17 foil mastic sealant. So we'll have links in the description if you are looking for the stuff we used or just trying to get some ideas. Again, this isn't supposed to be a, a pro job by any means, but it's supposed to be functional. And that's, in the end, that's our goal always. And now all we gotta do is install it. All right, so we got our little four inch box in, good and secure, and we can just drop the open grate right in there. All right, so there's our, there's our extra eight inch duct, and it's gonna go in that cavity right there. And then underneath here to the hole that we just cut, and that's gonna be where we connect it to the duct elbow and the box. And we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next video.